spot you're looking at is where the old Enslow Mansion once stood. Um, it's 1307 3rd Avenue in Huntington. The Enslow Mansion was one of the most luxurious private homes in early Huntington. Prominent attorney and businessman Frank B. Enslow built the 26 room house in 1896 in a neighborhood nicknamed the Millionaire's Row. It was one of the major centers of social life in Huntington in the early 1900s. The mansion became infamous in 1936 when Enslow's widow, Juliet Buffington Enslow, was found murdered in her bedroom. The murder and subsequent trial of her son, Charles Baldwin, for the crime was widely publicized and sensationalized. Baldwin was ultimately found not guilty and the crime remains a mystery to this day. On October 17, 1936, along Huntington's elite Millionaire's Row, a widow was brutally murdered in her bedroom suite in her mansion. Juliet B. Enslow was the widow of Frank Enslow and the daughter of Huntington's very first mayor, Peter Klein Buffington, was found stabbed and beaten to death in the early morning hours. Her great-grandfather, Thomas Buffington, was one of the early settlers of this region, so her roots grew deep in the area. Her first husband was Charles Baldwin, and their child was, child was Charles Baldwin Jr., who grew up to be a lawyer and was residing with Juliet at the time of her death. After the death of her first husband, Juliet married Frank Enslow, a lawyer who was known as the most, one of the most influential men in West Virginia. In 1890, he built one of the area's most elegant homes, boasting 27 rooms, marble fireplaces, and Tiffany chandeliers, located right here on this very corner. It was the scene of very many lavish parties and the hub of Huntington society. Frank and Juliet lived there together with their daughter, Dorothy, Frank's son, Frank Enslow Jr., and Juliet's son, Charles. Juliet Enslow. alive 10 30 p.m. October 16 1936 that night her son Charles had three visitors over in their plain bridge in the parlor also there was her housekeeper and friend Lizzie Bricker as well as a staff of servants so in the morning around 8 30 the chauffeur found Juliet's wallet lying in the driveway he brought it inside to the housekeeper who became really alarmed because this is strange obviously she ran to Juliet's suite and there she found Juliet beaten and bloody with a towel wrapped around her neck they found five stab marks in her head believed to have been made by an ice pick possibly as well as defensive wounds on her hands a search of her suite showed two diamond rings missing as well as a diamond encrusted watch the watch was later found in the dresser drawer Curiously, even though it rained all night, the wallet found outside was dry, so this led to speculation that it had been planted. There are no fingerprints found in the room and no signs of forced entry, leading the police to believe it was an inside job. 
Juliet's funeral was held in her beautiful mansion, and she was then laid to rest in Spring Hill Cemetery, where we are now. Her son Charles was arrested and arraigned October 27, 1936. He went to trial and was found not guilty on March 25, 1937. So in February of 1940, three years later, one of Juliet's diamond rings was found in a catch basin behind the Inslow Mansion. It was described as a large diamond solitaire set and a platinum. So who killed Juliet? Was it her son? At the time of the murder, he wasn't working as a lawyer and he was living with his mother, so was he short on money? Could he not wait for the inheritance? Or was Lizzie possibly more to him than just a housekeeper? Was she involved? Or was it one of Charles' guests? Or was it all of them? Unfortunately, these questions will never be answered. Also unfortunate is the fate of the beautiful Inslow Mansion. It ended up being sold and was used as a steel funeral home for many years before it was burned to the ground in a fire. Some people believe that someone knew the truth, someone with access to the stolen rings. Maybe they wanted absolution for their crimes. But we'll never know. Rest in peace, Juliet. You deserve better. Rest in peace, Frank. I hope you're both together in paradise. I hope you guys enjoyed our story. It's starting to rain more. Storms really, really getting in there now. So I think it's time to. That's to admit such a crime.